I should have stated that the reason why presuppositional apologetics um, is more distinctive is because they're also very reliable on reform theology. Okay, ah. and like in like in the in the mind of, of Van Til when he was sort of you know coming up with this schema, he um, was adamant about the idea that in order to have a good apologetic, you need to have a good theology, and so he was very adamant of holding to a reformed perspective of theology. Um, you probably say, you know, yeah, to have a, if, if you have good theology, you have a good apologetic. If you have bad theology, you're going to have a bad apologetic. I think I said that right. Um, yeah. So um, with that in mind, the presuppositionalist, therefore, is taking into consideration what sort of a reformed anthropology is. And that is what reformed theology teaches about the nature of man, the nature of God, the nature of the world. And he takes those into consideration. Um, as sort of a framework of how sort of the discussion is going to happen between the believer and the unbeliever. Hmm. Two, two people who are very formative in Van Til's thinking during this time, he, he was writing, in, uh, I guess, in the early 20th century, if we can put some dates there, is that he was really influenced by like um, uh, Abraham Kuyper, who was oh, a okay. Dutch reformed I guess like statesperson. Uh, I don't really know what his official title. I think I think it was prime minister actually. Um, so actually very high up there. Um, Abraham Kuyper was one person, and then the other person was BB Warfield, who's a little bit more well known in the states because he was sort of um, one of the leading theologians in the 20th century and Princeton the and at Princeton Seminary. And so, anyways, um, what Van Til tried to do was try to find a synthesis between these two thinkers. Because on the on the topic of apologetics, they were both actually diametrically opposed to one another. Kuiper didn't see the use of apologetics because his theology was such that there was this huge gap between the believing worldview and the unbelieving worldview, in which the principles of the Christian and the principles of the non-Christian um, are antithetical to one another, and that they actually don't have a common ground in theory. It's because at the center of a Christian presupposition is the triune God, God himself. And all of human knowledge, human predication, that is how we reason and so forth, um, has its meaning. Or, you know, the word is intelligibility that's usually used in these circles, which means like, you know, to make sense of, uh, to make something meaningful, uh, comes from the triune God. And the triune God, you know, the triune God is the one who sort of provides the intelligibility for um, all these things. Um, and then the non-Christian obviously doesn't. The non-Christian starts off sort of with mo with um, humanity at the center, right? Sort of man gets to decide what is what is right and wrong, um, you know, and, and sort of like I guess Protagoras, you know, the man is the measure of all things, you know, um, sort of get that kind of thinking, you know, whether or not that's like a fair observation about the, the Enlightenment. I guess it might be is that man is I guess I guess that's fair for sure. Um, in any event. Um, although I think what Van Til would say is that that idea where man being at the center uh, of one's, you know, knowledge actually comes from um, the garden, right? That was right. the ultimate sin of Adam and Eve was autonomy. Autonomy is also a, a big concept and it means uh, self-law, right? So anyways, um, Abraham, that was kind of Abraham Kuyper's sort of, um, you know, framework and how he approached these things. And then when he thought about it, he was like, well, apolog apologetics is useless then. I mean, how could we possibly reason with the unbeliever when he doesn't even, you know, accept that things are created by God and controlled by a sovereign God and that we're created in his, in his image and all these sorts of, you know, theological truths. And so he saw a big disconnect and antithesis between it. B.B. Uh, Warfield, on the other hand, uh, wasn't so pessimistic about that. Um, he believed that Christianity was, you know, what's interesting enough is that both of these guys were reformed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were both Calvinists. And they, um, had diff very different perspectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so B.B. Warfield was on the, you know, on the opposite. He says, no, that's really not the case. Is that God has revealed himself. You know, he was coming from sort of that natural theological background. Um, he understood those philosophical arguments and, and the arguments for the Bible and the resurrection. And he said, these things are compelling. And in fact, God has created the world and, and, hum and humans to understand in such a way that they are, they can find these things compelling with that you know, without being committed to scripture in, in, in sort of that, I guess, dogmatic way. I don't know if this is the best way of putting it, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that B.B. Warfield was like, yo, no, apologetics is good. 
we can totally do it. Man, uh, this is a good thing. Yeah. He's one of the finest apologists, right? That's how he's known. Um, so anyways, what Van Til tried to do then is that he respected both these men. And so he wanted to find a synthesis between them, uh, at least in, in, in the context of apologetics. And, right. so on, and so he agreed with Kuiper in the sense that there is this synthesis, that there really is this um, difference of presuppositions at their most basic fundamental levels between the Christian and the non-Christian. Uh, but he didn't draw the conclusion that apologetics, apologetics is therefore necessary. He also agreed with, uh, with Warfield in saying that, no, actually, um, Christianity can be proved in a rational, objective way. And how Van Til did it was by way of transcendental um, arguments, is kind of how it's known. Um, and that is by way of presupposition. And what he wanted to do is that, well, actually, if we're so, as, as Christians and I guess committed Calvinists, uh, we are committed to this idea that man is made in the image of God and that cannot change. That didn't change after the fall. In fact, um, all, of, all of humanity is gonna continue to exist within this paradigm of, of God being their creator. And so, um, oh, where am I going with this? Maybe you can help me out. Um, now I'm not sure. I, I guess you were just <laughs> trying to explain the the philosophy of Van Til and. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Right? Oh, oh yeah! Um, and so oh yeah, that's right. And so he, like I said, like so he actually agrees with Warfield in the sense that the, it, Christianity is objectively provable. And so he thinks, uh, yeah, the way to do this by presupposition. I just realized I probably just uh, repeated myself, but that's all right. <laughs>